Hello, everybody. How's it going? Ben Gothard here, founder and CEO of Gothard Enterprises and author of COA20. Today, I'm here with the magnificent Chris Jones. Chris, you want to introduce yourself, my man? Yo, guys, what is going on? Chris Jones is on Life Success. I am out of the course, straight from the UK in a small town called Whitland within Carmarthen Church in Wales, United Kingdom. So for all you US homies, it's coming up 10 p.m. here in the UK. I'm tired, but the hustle still goes on. Back to you, Benny boy. Absolutely, man. So today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be talking about Kindle publishing, right? So we did a video a little while back on passive income, and we were talking about the seven or not V7, but seven different ways that you can build passive income. And the first way that we were talking about was Kindle publishing. So we want to do a little bit more in-depth video on Kindle publishing. So today we're going to be talking about one, what is it, right? What is Kindle publishing? Two, why you should consider jumping on to Kindle publishing. And three, an overview of how to actually do it. So Chris, without further ado, because you are brilliant and because you're rocking that awesome hoodie, do you want to jump in and talk about what is Kindle publishing? Okay, even though I think Ben should be talking about this because he's the one with plus 10 books on the shelf, but I'll dive in. Um, I'll give my kind of experience as well in the lowdown. So, uh, you know, there's many people doing this like awesome, like, you know, we know Jason Bratt, like he's, he's the main man. He's killing it. He's killing and it. He should be the third guy. And like all the humble attitude that comes with it is awesome. Um, yeah, so Kindle Direct Publishing is, uh, is a platform hosted by the great Amazon. Something that's kept me alive, food on my plate, a roof over my head for the last two years, baby. And um, so it's something that you can pretty much write content or what we'll dive into soon is get content written for you by a freelancer on certain websites. So all that we're doing is we're writing our own books, okay, and then we're uploading it to the Kindle platform, which is short for KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing. So it goes onto the platform, and then you mark your book through um, all of the on-page stuff, all the details, the title, the key features, the description, the book cover, and then the person, the shopper, the customer will go ahead and buy that product from you. And that's all automated. You're not sitting with any stock. This is complete upload to the internet so it's it's great there's no there's no there's no hold of stock or books at your house except for the paperback which um, ben will talk to you very soon about absolutely absolutely so just to kind of touch on what chris said kdp kindle publishing is about putting books online selling books online right and and it is through amazon's platform now for those of you who aren't as familiar with amazon's history they actually started off as predominantly an online bookstore right and so it's kind of cool to see the progression of their business and now now they're the everything store but they still have a huge focus on selling books through their kindle platform right so kdp as chris was talking about has two real main users right either you are the author right either you're the one that is actually writing the books you're you're putting in the time the sweat the blood the tears to do your research or talk about something you're really passionate about talk about something you're an expert in and you're writing these books yourself you're formatting it um in a very specific way for for kindle and then you're going and getting the cover and you're uploading it right and so you are both writing it and you're publishing it the other way that people do it is they pay other people right they pay freelancers or other individuals to write the book and they buy that book from them they buy that information and then they sell that on kindle so they upload it and they do more of the marketing side of it right so those are the two real focuses of the kdp platform now, Chris, I, oh, yeah, yeah. We, we spoke about before um, that I think people are, are scared off by this business model just because they think they actually have to write a book because an ebook is involved. Therefore, they have to, you know, worry about what the first line of this sentence is going to look like, read like, sound like. So, you know, just to put it out there, you don't have to write a, a single 
word of going into this business. You just, in a way, you don't even have to be like um, the best manager in the world. You just have to have maybe some creative spark, some creative spark, some good energy for what you want to see on your bookshelf, on your online bookshelf, not bookshelf at home. And um, yeah, you just need to follow the process and obviously work with a good freelancer who's going to serve you well from the first book to the hundredth book to the thousandth book that you're going to release. Um, yeah, yeah, it's my 10 pence. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, you know, one of the things that I really like that you said, Chris, was that you don't have to write the books if you don't want to. Right. And, and that is great because then you can focus on just building your business. Right. And so you can spend the time finding your writers. You can work on your marketing tactics. You can learn more about Amazon as a whole. And so you can focus your time being a publisher instead of having to spend the time to write and market and do the graphic design and do everything. So it's an interesting business model and one that if you do it the right way, can continue to provide passive income for you for years and years and years to come. So, Chris, um, can you talk a little bit about your experience uh, with uh, Amazon KDP uh, and, and maybe just give a little bit of backstory on where your knowledge is coming from as far as Kindle publishing goes? Yeah, so of disclosure, just before I start off, I'm not I'm I'm currently not making money from Kindle, just gonna put it out there. The most earnings I have made within a four week period was eight hundred and sixty seven pounds, um, and that's UK. Um I've only stopped the Kindle rep publishing about, you know, a year and a half ago because I started more physical products with Amazon FBA. I'm not gonna go into that now. Uh, but how I got started in the Kindle and when I really started to get going and, and make some good money off it was um, one night when I came home working as a personal trainer, I'm sure this is heard throughout all of the other videos we've done, came home after like a long, grueling 12, 16 hour shift. Um, and I remember t um, typing in on Google, how do I make money online or how do I make money while I sleep? And the first thing that popped up on that first page result was Kindle Direct Publishing. Um, and I remember that night I stayed up for, you know, till 7 a.m. the next morning after getting in at 12 o'clock that night for my shift. And I remember just writing these terrible like green smoothie recipes like five six pages and i was and then i i uploaded these books to kindle um i got um uh designs made on the actual kindle platform so you know you can do those kind of basic designs on kindle i didn't i went through the whole process i wrote some kind of recipe books i copied and pasted a lot of the recipes from online um you know not knowing what i was doing at all i uploaded all of them and at 7 a.m i'd had three three uh, recipe books live one of which was called the greens the greens machine or something absolutely terrible Big apologies to the to the to the people who had to read those books because they were terrible. Um, so yeah, it was from that. I remember going to sleep at seven a.m. after writing those books and uploading. Waking up at one p.m. and I'd made something like two or three sales from those books that I just uploaded. And I kind of sat back and thought, like, this is crazy. Now, people have just gone and bought these books. I'm not sure if the read was good. It definitely wasn't. And um, that kind of just spurred the realization on to this can actually make money. So if you can spend a very small amount of time creating some terrible eBooks with terrible covers, what the potential could be if you were to really do this properly. And then from there, I started to scale up. And then I found Fiverr using the eBook covers. I found Freelancer to get the work done for me. And then it started to scale up. And after a couple of weeks or one or two months, then, then that's when I hit the 800 pound plus and it was great feeling. Um, and then I got more into Amazon FBA. So Kindle starts again soon. So I'm looking forward to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I just kind of want to give a little bit of my history too on, uh, on KDP, just so that you guys that are listening and gals that are listening know that we're not just talking out of our asses, right? Like we're actually, I'm actually, going to play, Chris has done before. Um, so, you know, we do have some experience with it, right? So uh, about, I'd say December of 2014 was when I started my first business. Uh, fast forward about July of 2015. Um, and I was doing some, I was actually, I remember I was in Dallas visiting my uncle um, and I was doing some research on how to build passive income, right? Because the idea of making money while you sleep 
of going and, you know, sitting on the beach and, you know, kicking back and, you know, putting your hands behind your head and just relaxing and still making money. That is so appealing to me. And it still is. And it's one of the reasons why I want to talk about it is because I want everybody else to be able to tap into that power and hone in on that, right? And be able to build passive income. So anyway, so I was looking up different videos, doing research, Googling, YouTubing, all this stuff. And this one gentleman was talking about how you can write a book, right? Write a quick ebook and you can sell that and continuously make money from that from the time that you publish it until you take it off or something else happens, right? And so from there, I got the idea of starting to write a book. I was like, you know, I was always pretty solid in English. I can write. Let's just, let me just communicate through words. So I did a little bit more research and I figured out that Amazon has this incredible platform, right? With KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing. And the great thing about KDP is that if you price your book from $2.99 to $9.99, you can keep 70, like 70% of the royalties. Now, I don't know if you know much about publishing or being an author, but if you go through a traditional publishing house, you might keep, might, 6%, right? So 6% versus 70%. That is huge. So I was like, why would why would I not put it on that platform, right? And so, you know, I was thinking 70%, that's awesome. Let's do this. Let's, let's get in on it, right? So I started writing this book. And what I thought was, let me write about what I know. Let me write about what I'm doing. And what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to chase my dreams. And so that kind of started the whole wave of me trying to help others chase their dreams too, because I'm really passionate about that. But I started writing uh, my book, CEO at 20, a little book for big dreams, right? And, you know, at first it started as just a way to make passive income. And to tell you all the truth, I fell in love with it. I absolutely <laughs> fell in love with the process of writing and creating and sharing. And so, you know, while Chris is kind of come at it from the point of, you know, let me pump out, a, you know, a large quantity of books and let me make some sales, you know, based on some some hot niches, you know, things that you know about, right? Like green smoothies. Um, I kind of took the approach of I started out with that approach, and then I was like, you know what? I really love this. I'm going to try to put forth a an, an, an exorbitant amount of effort and really try to put out a, an extremely high quality book. And so it took me a year to put out that first book, right? Because I was writing it. I got it edited by three different people. I spent so much time working on a cover. I wanted to learn as much about KDP as possible. And so I wrote that book, right? And 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 since then, you know, I published it July 3rd of 2016. And almost immediately, like day one, I started making sales, just like Chris was saying, right? And it was incredible. Like something that I had created, that I had written myself. One, I was a published author. And two, people were buying it. People actually gave enough of a shit about what I was saying to pay me money in order to read it. And so from there, it was just like, this is incredible. What if I keep doing this, right? So since then, I've put out 14 more books. So I have 15 out in total. Um, and it, it's just been incredible, right? And so there's really no limit to the things you can do with KDP, right? You can write it yourself. You can get other people to write it for you. You can do both and you can sell it, right? As long as you're getting books, formatting them, putting them on the platform, you're creating assets, you're building assets. And the beauty of it is, right? And, and I want to move into why you should do it in a little bit. And we kind of touched on it a little bit, but, but the beauty of it is that if you get a copyright for your book, right? And if you go on, um, you know, some website, you have to just type in, you know, U.S. copyright or wherever you are, get a copyright for your book. That copyright, at least in the U.S., lasts for your lifetime. Plus, I think like like 50 to 70 years afterwards. And, and correct me if I'm wrong on that, but it is an exorbitant amount of time that you get to own this asset and you are, have this asset copyrighted to your name. So this is something that you can pass on to your kids and they can pass on to their kids, right? So you're building this portfolio of books 
you can pass that on. So, so Chris, let's talk a little bit about, we, we kind of talked about what it is, uh, uh, what Kindle publishing is. Let's talk about why people should spend their time learning about it and potentially jumping on the platform themselves. Yeah, I just, I personally think it's, it's, a, it's just a great way to um, focus your attention on other things as opposed to working a nine to five job. You know, when, when Ben and I speak about this stuff, we're not, I think a lot of this is looked upon as you have to go and quit your nine to five job and then you really have to dig deep at this business model. Every single aspect of information and minute detail has to be focused on for this to be successful. That's not what we're saying. Or, and we're trying to put across the concept of to create passive income, you've got to work a bit of that. I'm not saying you have to do a lot to, to do this because, you know, you can have the freelancers writing the book for you. There's not much work that goes into this. We're saying if you could put a, that small amount of effort and energy into getting this going, getting this passive income stream going that could help your finances to flow very smoothly over the over the due course of however long Kindle publishes, publishing is alive. We don't know. No one can answer that question. But it's always good to take a chance and take that chance now. Don't wait. Don't wait until the cows come home. Don't wait until tomorrow. Start today. And that's not, you know, we're not trying to sell anything here. We're just trying to help people create another stream of income for themselves. People should get more into the passive side of things because no one likes working for someone deep down no matter how much money they're on you you work you have to you have to answer to someone that you potentially dislike speaking to employees you potentially do not want to speak to eating food next to people that you do not want to eat food next to when you get something like this going when you create that passive stream you can do stuff for yourself and i'm not saying you're going to earn five ten thousand dollars a month straight off the bat that's i'm not going to say that's unrealistic either because it's not jason brack our friend has, has proven that time and time again shout out jay and um, so this is all very real. So the process is pretty much find a book, find a freelancer, upload that book to Kindle, get paid after four, six weeks, um, repeat the process, learn, rinse and repeat that process again, learn more, earn more, and then contribute more with your earnings to your friends, your family, and people around you who are less fortunate. I know I try to, get, I, I sometimes go off on a tangent like this, but when it all comes down to it, create passive income yourself, but for everybody around you, so you can do so much more with your life. Um, because there's only so many hours in the day that you can really go and activate yourself in a job where you have to be there every single hour to earn a wage. Imagine working in a nine to five where you work 10 hours a day, but then Kindle Direct Publishing is working for you 24 hours like that on absolute tick. So that's something to really consider. Spend a few hours a night researching some books, speaking to your freelancers, really getting this process going, because trust me, if you do this right, you will not have a frown at the, on your face by the end of it. You will have a big, fat, grinning, bright smile, baby. Woo! <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, I kind of want to add my two cents too, right? When, <laughs> when you think about the time that most people spend working for somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. You are devoting so many hours of your life to helping somebody else build their dream, right? And and that's not, I'm not knocking that, right? I'm not saying that that is inherently bad, but I'm saying it's not for everybody. And I'm saying that there is a way out, right? And that way is passive income, okay? So when you think about it, what passive income is really about is about building assets, or, or investing your money in or time into something and making that money work for you, right? Instead of working for money and trade of, instead of trading your time for money, you are making your money work for you. Okay. And so when you do this, you free yourself up to do whatever it is that you want to do. Right. If you, if you then want to continue working because you are aligned with that vision, and you love being at the place you are. You love the camaraderie of being in that space every day. You love the people you work with. They're your family. Stay doing that. Keep doing that, right? But know that when you build yourself a stream of passive income, you don't have to do it. 
You don't have to do it. You have the choice, right? And so passive income truly gives you the choice to be able to say, I don't want to go to work today. In fact, I don't want to ever go to work for anybody else ever again. I want to be my own boss, right? And it gives you the power to say that, right? And so why specifically KDP? One, one, Amazon is enormous. Amazon is huge, right? I was I was watching this uh, video the other day, and check me on the statistic, but uh, the, the gentleman was saying that over 50% of people who are trying to buy something go and search on Amazon first. So Amazon is their first stop when they're trying to buy something. If it's to ask a question, Google still has that. Google has that locked down for now. But when it's to buy something, when the intent is to buy something, Amazon is the biggest search engine on the internet right now. So when you put up books there, when you sell information on Amazon, you are tapping into their enormous, enormous foundation of customers, right? Yeah. So that's why KDP is so powerful. That's why it's so impactful because you can tap into Amazon's pre-built market, right? Now, again, as, as we were talking about earlier, books, do, they don't go away. You don't have inventory. You don't have stock. It's a digital product. Or uh, as we'll talk about um, in the process of how to do it, it is a paperback product or a, an audiobook, right? But the way that we're going to tell you how to do it, you don't have to deal with inventory. You put it up once and then it, it's selling, right? And Amazon will sell it for you, right? And, and you can go on this thing called KDP Select and Amazon will actually heavily market that book for you even more. Right. And so we'll give you a few tips and tricks on how to do that in a little bit. But essentially, Kindle Publishing allows you to tap into Amazon's massive market. And because of the nature of your product, it doesn't go away. Right. If you build a quality asset in a book and you, you hire a great freelancer, you build a great cover and you do your you do your research, you get keywords and you do all the right things to get that book selling at first it can continue to sell for you year after year. Like Chris was saying, you don't have to go work nine hours in a day because your Kindle books are working for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? That money is working for you, okay? So that's why we're saying go Kindle. That's why we're saying invest your time and effort into this platform, because it is yeah, so yeah. huge. It is so replenishable. And the books just, they don't go away, right? Just, just a, a, like, like a non overwhelm. People who think we're, we're talking about books that are the thickness of this in terms of reading wise, that's not what we're saying. <laughs> you, you could have books for as little as 10, 15 pages, or you could have books as long as 500 pages. It's not. It, you don't have to produce these long ass reads. You can do short stories exactly like Ben does. I'm not sure about how how long your first book was, Ben, but um, you know the others are, are very reasonable in terms of length. And it's to to not put the overwhelming factor all over you. You start small and then scale up and then update the book that you currently have a market to build on its quality and so on um and yeah yeah so uh, yeah ben with your first one with your first product so with, with your first book how many pages was that then to give people a um an example the book that i put out was about 43 pages that's okay. it it was 43 pages all the ones after that were anywhere from I don't know, 20 pages to up to like 70, but that's it. I mean, yeah. you know, like Chris was saying, you don't have to have this gargantuan product, this gargantuan book out, right? Especially if you're paying somebody to do it for you and you just want to test out the market in the beginning, get them to write you a five page book, a 10 page book and test the market, test mm -hmm. the market, right? Now, Chris, can you talk a little bit about how powerful that is when, when you're able to conserve resources by testing out the market? Yeah, so you, you don't, again, so if you want to just fly into 
that you, you can't you can't really dive into something without again testing the market. You have to do your pre-hand research or your your everything on getting something live to make it the most successful you can. You know, when I started out, I didn't know that these green smoothie books were gonna sell. They sold for a couple of weeks, they sold for first two months and then, you know, I deleted my account after that, but I'm sure they would have gone blah 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 blah. And that was because of my lack of research, my lack of knowledge pre-hand to getting these books written or writing them myself. So the actual product research factor, and this goes for all businesses, including startups, physical products, e-courses, other in information products, the actual product research and development phase is one of the biggest factors you can do. Now, I'm not going to dive into how to properly find a book because Jason Brack would either give me a thumbs up or thumbs down, so I'm not even going to go too far into that. All that I will say is leverage the resources online, such as Google Trends, Look at the trend of a main keyword. If it's self-help, if it's personal development, go to googletrends.com and see the graph. Is it a maintenance graph? Is it an increasing graph? Or is it a dying graph? That will give you a demand kind of um, additional information to um, go ahead and feel more secure in releasing that book or product or anything online for that matter. Um, so, yeah, make testing phase and, yeah, and then go forward with it. One thing that I think is actually a, a, an incredibly powerful strategy to use um, is this idea of micro testing, right? So test out a few different uh, niches, if you will, and, and we're going to go into a little bit more about what that is uh, in a second. But find the um, marketplace, like like Chris was saying, whether it's self help, uh, whether it's you know mind and body, whether it's uh, green smoothies, whatever it may be, test it out with a short book see how it goes and then if it's successful then go more into that niche right and one thing that i've actually noticed um is is a very powerful asset once you get a little bit more into it is that once you find a niche and you you become an authority in that niche and you can use a pen name you can use you know your your author name if you're writing it um you know whatever whatever name you may be using um, once you find a niche that works and you you know you keep releasing under that pen name, then it becomes a lot easier to get seen overall because you have so many more assets. And what you can do is let's say you're doing five green smoothie recipes using uh, I don't know vegetables. Then you can do using fruit. Then you can do using this and that and this and that, right? And go on and on and on. And the cool thing is that once you have a ton of different books, you can combine them in various ways. So like you can say instead of five green smoothie recipes for vegetables, you can do 25 green smoothie recipes for vegetables, fruit, antioxidant, you know, whatever it may be. So not only do you have these original assets, but you can repurpose them into other books and keep bundling them. You can do book bundles. You can do uh, different giveaways where you give away one book and then that leads people into buying all of your other ones, right? And so you can do so many different things as you're testing and as you're producing, right? And so, you know, one of the things that is so powerful about that is all those little books, you know, the, the little, like, let's say each book is another chapter, right? Like five, five green smoothie recipes for vegetables is one chapter, which used to be a book. That original book, you can then link to the bigger book in it. So your books will not only be making you money, but they'll be marketing your other books for you, which will make you more money, right? So the more you do it, it's an upward spiral where you're just building assets, you're building marketing material, you're building content, and to eventually you have this massive, massive um, horde of just content and, and products that you can sell and do some really cool things with. So yeah, yeah. Chris, now that we've talked a little bit about why it is so powerful. Can you maybe give your insight on the process, right? And and I'll go in and I can talk about the process as well from more of a um, like author standpoint, right? From 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 being a self published author standpoint. But maybe you could get you could touch on more the business aspect of being the publisher. Okay, so. Right, so I think this comes down to forming a team. So 
if you're not the author, say you've got the author, okay, I'm going to hire you in this case, Ben. You're my author, okay? I'm the publisher. I'm the boss. I'm the man at the top. Now, I'm going to I'm gonna say that all of everything that I do with Kindle is a weakness, okay? So all that I'm going to do right now is play to my strengths. And let's say and this is not my personal strength, but what it is in this example is management, okay? So management of my team and structuring all the things from the start and certain processes for maintenance and growth of the Kindle business. So from a business start point of view, you, I personally would go for a couple of freelancers. So, you know, say if you do get let down from one freelancer, then you've also, you've also got Bill or Jane over here who's going who's gonna to save the day. So you've all, always got to have someone in the background to, you know, maybe keep some books flowing or some other books are uploading and so on. Um, you've also got to be very careful when taking um, time in terms of freelancers. There is a website called Plague, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Ben, Plague, Plague Scan. Is that correct? Plague yeah, Scan. I and think so. Yeah, and what that does, it scans the book that's been written by freelancers that you're not very familiar with in the starting route. You upload the book to Plague Scan, and then it checks for plagiarism of that book, which is very, very helpful. And it gives you points and certain percentages of what might have been copied from the internet so you can go back and edit and so on and so on and give the freelancer, which is in this case, Ben, a smack on the back and say, pull your finger up, Benny boy, get to it. So yeah, when it comes to that, you can also have a team for uploading. So you can have a team for ebook covers, you can have your ebook designer, and this is all coming from me as like the hub. And then I've got people here, people here, people here, people here, people here. So all I have to do is point them in the right, right direction. So I'll have my ebook cover, my two freelancers, my plague scan guys who will upload that, the Kindle guys who will do the, the uploading, and some some maybe a team of like SEO. I'm not sure. Um, but that's how it would work. And then I'd also create like a Facebook page, a Twitter page, an Instagram page to speak about the demographics that my books are in, not directly marked in the books itself, but mainly just targeting the whole demographic, the industry that it's in, providing value around that. And if to further extend that, I'd probably have a website and a blog right, you know, search engine optimization, um, all of the the main key points of what my books are so I can build hype off as well, my own blog, website, and the social media platforms, which only helps to drive more traffic to Kindle to sell more books, blah, 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 blah. I know that Kindle has now brought out a pay-per-click. That's that's right, isn't it? They brought out a sponsored ads kind of campaign. So yeah, that's, so they have, yeah, they didn't have that when I was funneling out these green smoothie recipes. Otherwise, I would have been a million a millionaire by now, baby. But <laughs> So, yeah, they've took that into account now. So you might have someone doing your paper clicks as well. Obviously, this will cost money, but then it will cost more of your time. If you were to do all of this, you'll get gray hairs early on in your life. And, um, yeah, you can more... You can be the person who structures everything as opposed to the person who's working on everything, which is like working on your business as opposed to working in it. So there's two very clear points you need to um, kind of push yourself apart from there. So that's that's my take, Lenny Boy. So just to kind of give a little bit more in depth on that process, um, just from, from the KDP view, right? all of these people need to be doing very specific tasks, right? And so kind of from, from an, an aerial perspective, uh, how I would recommend to start as the publisher would be to go onto Amazon and find your niche, right? And what do I mean by this? Find your market, right? And so I would go into Amazon and I would go to the Kindle store and I would go to the best sellers, right? And there's little categories on your left and I would go look through those categories, pick something that interests you or that you know about or that you have a desire to go into that niche and go as deep as you can. Right. So if you click in self-help, then there will be like subcategories and keep going into those subcategories until you find one that's very, very deep into the subcategory section. Right. Because that's going to be a very niche market. Right. If you try to compete with everybody in self-help, it's going to be a lot more difficult than if you go self-help, personal development, uh, time management. Right. So like time management is a lot more niche than self-help. Right. So you go into time management and then you go look at the top, I don't know, 40 books in the bestsellers. 
and you would get out your notepad and you would go and you would you would write down all the different keywords that you find right so keywords just as a as a brief overview and, and chris maybe you could touch a little bit more on keywords but keywords are what your customers are searching for when they're on amazon right so let's say somebody wants to find a yoga mat they're going to type in more than likely yoga mat so yoga mat is a keyword right chris can you talk a little bit more about keywords and talk about the difference between short tail and long tail keywords and why it's so important to understand this okay so from from my experience working with amazon fba you know over 25 products online in the last last two years some of which were a big failure um keywords come into massive importance when um when selling on a product. So let me give you an example. So I sell a green tea extract, which is a supplement. It comes in the form of a bottle actually. And so my main keyword, the main keyword for that, that people will be typing in on amazon.co.uk is green tea extract with a space in between green and tea and tea and extract, okay? So you wanna be very careful in placing that specific keyword in three of the main points, okay, four of the main points, excuse me, on the Amazon FBA platform, okay, which is your title, and this relates heavily to Kindle, by the way, also. So your title, your key features, your description, and your back-end search terms, okay, that's four if you can't see that. Okay, so you want to be keyword heavy without being too spammy or spammy at all from what I've learned, okay? So you, the difference in green tea extract, okay? If you were to include green tea, okay, green tea within your title, your, your marketing pitch or product page, and you, you start to show up for the, the keyword green tea, and you try to kind of trick, I've seen this, I've seen this over the last two years. People try to trick customers in for search, for search terms that is going to, um, they're going to come up in front of the customer and then hopefully that customer is going to buy the unrelated product to the keyword that you're trying to, you know, pull, pull wool over their eyes from. So if you try to market green tea, because green tea is very, very uh, popular, green tea extract, your green tea extract product will start to show up for the green tea search, okay? And when that when this starts to fill up, people get more than annoyed with with your product starting to show up on the product page that they're looking for. So it can come very in relation to what, what's happening with Kindle. You've got to have the right keywords to show up with the right phrases at the right points at the right pages. So that's a very big part of it. And when I started, I didn't have a clue about keywords. You know, I'm still learning the process as well. So if people are wondering now in terms of is this the same as uh, search engine optimization with Google, there's a big difference, okay? You've got to learn certain platforms, how certain algorithms work, and Kindle works different to Amazon FBA and so forth to, uh, to Google, so forth to Yahoo, and so on and so on. Um, so, yeah, pick your keywords wisely and make sure you always check the Google um, Google Keyword Planner as well, so Google Keyword Planner or Keyword Tool to, to cross-represent all of that as well. Woo! Absolutely, absolutely, and and that's a ton of great uh, information, Chris. I want to thank you for for dropping the value as per usual. But uh, just to go a little bit more into keywords because they are very important, right? Keywords are how customers find you, and they need to be very accurate. Okay, so if you are having you are you if you're publishing a book on let's say green tea extracts and how that can make you healthier, right? You wouldn't want to put keywords relating to how to build passive income, right? Because it's not related to your book. These keywords are words that your customers use to find your product. So the more accurate you are with everything, the more consistent you are across everything, like Chris was saying, the title, the description, the key features, all these things, the more you use those keywords that accurately represent the product that you are selling, which in this case is your Kindle book, the easier it is for your for your, uh, your consumers, your customers to find you and to buy your stuff and for it to be what they want so that, you know, that they're happy so that they'll keep coming back to buy. And the more people that come back to buy, the higher Amazon ranks you up. So again, don't overthink it, right? If you're doing something on green tea extract, right, yeah, then maybe yeah. do green tea extract as one keyword. And then what you can do, and here is a pro tip, right? And this tip was, um, mm -hmm. This tip is uh, is something that um, 
you know, I think a lot of people, a lot more people can take advantage of, but you can go on Amazon in incognito mode, right? Because Amazon stores information on you. You don't want to, to pollute these results with your own um, browsing history. So go in incognito mode and type in green tea extract or green tea, right? And, and don't type in further. See what Amazon's auto suggestion puts in, right? Because they're telling you what their customers are searching for. So if you type in green tea and hit space, it, Amazon's going to tell you what the next words are going to be, whether it's green tea extract, green tea recipes, green tea smoothies, right? It's going to tell you all these things and then all these keywords that the majority of their customers are searching for in the Kindle store. And again, don't search in all departments. Go to Kindle store in incognito mode and green tea space. See what it is, right? Get the, get the keywords that match your product the best, right? And then if those aren't enough, because it won't, they won't always be the all the keywords that you need, then you can type in green tea space and put an A and see what happens yeah, after yeah. that, right? And then put a B and see what comes up after that. And then put a C, right? And so you're checking each letter, green tea, and you're checking each letter. So your main keyword's green tea, but the specific keywords that you want to rank for, that you want to dominate the competition for, are these, these longer tail keywords, green tea, A, whatever it pops up as, B, whatever it pops up as, C, whatever it pops up as. And so you can see how you go through and you systematically search for all these keywords and you check and you and you find those that most accurately describe your product, okay? And the one other thing, oh yeah. You can oh, finish that shot. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And the one last thing I would say on that is, I would pick about, as I, I would write down any keyword, once you're doing, you know, you go A through Z, like green tea, A through Z, then I would write down all of the keywords that are the most relevant to your product, right? Write them all down. You may have five, you may have 20, however many that may be, you write them all down. And then you want to go and you want to search for that specific term, that specific keyword, right? So the main keyword is green tea. Well, let's say you wrote down green tea recipes for beginners, Go and search those terms and look and see all of the results. And you want to go and you want to make sure that those results are selling. Now, how do you do that? One easiest way to do that is by going and clicking on those results and, and looking at the Amazon bestseller rank. If the Amazon bestseller rank is under 100,000 in the Kindle store, you know that that book is selling typically about one per day, one book per day. Okay. So what I would recommend is your main keyword, look for books, the top books, I'd say the top three to five books are all under 40,000 as their Amazon bestseller ranking. And then all of your other keywords, your extra keywords are all under 100,000 Amazon bestseller rank. Okay. So again, you're finding what's already working, right? You're going into the bestsellers, you're finding these keywords that are already working. And then you're doing another sub search of all the keywords that are related to that main specific keyword and finding out what's already working there. And then you're applying that to your book. So Chris, could you talk a little bit about uh, how you do keyword research um, and, and what differences between uh, how I would, how I do it with Kindle and, and how you do it for, for Amazon FBA, because I think we can together, people can synthesize and, and come up with a, you know, their own process. I'm, I'm going to keep this very simple and say you've hit the nail on the head with what you did with a search term. So, like, I keep it very simple in terms of my keyword research for products on Amazon FBA. I will, I will just use the drop down pretty much on Amazon search engine and exactly what Ben said. Type in the main keyword for what your, your product is. Don't try and pull the wool over anybody's eyes in terms of adding different keywords in because that doesn't work. It will eat up your pay-per-click money as well. So don't go down that route. So main keyword in the top results, okay? So type in the letters slow. So green tea extract, G-R-E-E-N. Type it in, type it in, type it in. And then start to add a letter at the end. So A, backspace to what's there. B, backspace, who was there, and so on. So it's interesting you said all that because Amazon FBA have now come up with something called now in the Kindle game, if this is there at the moment, but I'm sure it will be. So a negative keyword is Amazon FBA have allowed you to embed 
within your pay-per-click campaign within the advertising sections of your of your seller central account now people this is amazon fba this is not kindle um so they have allowed you to put in negative keywords so what that means is again let's go by the example of green tea extract here so say if my product is just green tea extract okay it hasn't got any additional flavoring any additional anything okay um it allows you to delete certain keywords off the end of that phrase so say if there's keywords coming up green tea extract with lime green tea extract 180 capsules mine's 120 amazon allows you to put in these negative keywords that are totally unrelated to your product into the negative keyword section so it helps you to show up for more relevant highly specific search terms to your product and spend less and waste more uh, so they're actually actually giving you options to take away from your keyword list so it can focus on the ones that are going to make the sales which is so friggin powerful so yeah that's 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 an overview that's it's a very simple formula how you do it i mean Obviously, there's some masterminds out there who go deep, deep, deep into this stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I like to keep it very kind of simple. Um, you know, basic works very much best for what I do. And um, yeah, I try not to overcomplicate it. And I and I preach that to people starting up too. And and you know, just just a caveat before we move on, because we've been spending a lot of time on keywords. But all these things that we're talking about they may seem difficult at first, right? It may seem difficult to go and pick your topic and pick these keywords and then do the, the rest of the process, but it's really not that tough, right? And, and once you get into it and you do it once, you'll be like, oh, wow, this is not that hard. I can freaking do yeah. this, right? The, the most important thing is to just get started. Your first few books might not be the best, right? You might not make a ton of sales on them, but you are learning the process and you can always go back and edit those books and optimize them or re-optimize them later on. So don't be afraid to get out there and test it, test the market. Okay. So we yeah. talked a little bit about keywords. So the next thing that I would do, once you have your keywords, I would go and find your freelancer. Okay. Yeah. And, and like Chris was saying, some great places that you can go are upwork.com, freelancer.com, uh, if you know people, you know, you might want to go on social media and say, hey, is anybody a freelancer? Uh, get some good recommendations that way. Regardless of how you want to go about doing it, um, you need to find a good freelancer. And what I would do in order to test them out, and, you know, Chris, if you have a different strategy, I'd love to hear it, man. But I would give them each a very small task. So maybe a five-page book at first. Give the three of them uh, the same task, right, the same exact task. And then that way you can you can measure the effectiveness of each one. So you can see their quality of work product. You can see the amount of time it takes them to get it back to you. You can see all these different things that are important when you're choosing a freelancer, right? Let's say you have one freelancer that they take five hours longer to do the product than freelancer than freelancer B, right? Freelancer A takes five hours longer than freelancer B and freelancer B's product is the same quality as freelancer A. Well, unless you test them out, you're never going to know that. And you're going to save money by testing out a few different ones. I would say three because that'll give you a, you know, the best, the the middle one and then the the least quality one and then go with the, the, the freelancer that's the best. And like Chris was saying, test out a few of them, keep testing until you have I'd say probably two to three on your team that at any time you can say, I need a book on this. I need a book on that. I need a book on that. Right. So Chris, you want to maybe talk a little bit about um, your, your style and your process. If it is, if it is different from that. Yeah. So what I would do is, is it's slightly different to that. So I would stick with the number of freelancers, but because I'm, I'm very much a blogger myself, I like to write in, in structure, all of that stuff. I actually prefer to reach out to a freelancer to write a blog for me. Now, I know that's not a book, okay, but sometimes a, a, um, a book is a long blog. And because it comes from my experience of knowing how to blog the structure and so, and I like to see, 
I and I, I try to put them under pressure. So say I, I'll pick a really hard subject to do with Amazon, okay? And I will like to like reach out to them and and give them the tough subject to write about. Therefore, there's no BS because I know the subject myself and then I can see them as a starting point, a middle point, and an ending point of that blog. And I try to, to say, look, don't go over 1,000, 1,200 words. So therefore, it's done fast. I normally don't have to pay for the sample and then it can come back to me and times three freelancers. So that's the way I like to do it. Um, and that's the way I will be doing it ongoing now when I go into Kindle more from July. So. That, that is an absolute great strategy. I didn't even think of doing that, man. I'm going to start doing that. And, uh, you know, if I start doing more, the yeah, awesome. yeah, just because they, they, because with the samples, they, they charge. And, you know, when you ask for samples at the various work, they pretty much send you, yeah, a vegetable smoothie book. Hopefully not one like I wrote, <laughs> that I wrote. And, um, you know, they'll send you some very basic articles. So I like to challenge them and say, okay, I want you to write an article on how negative keywords are formatted within the Amazon algorithm and stuff like that. So they're normally very confident about writing a book. So I'm like, okay, if you're confident about writing a book, you should be very confident in writing a thousand words on this with a start, a middle, and ending. Go and normally they they can do that pretty much in a in an hour or two. Send the work back and it'll be free of charge anyway. And normally it comes back very good. So yeah, that's the process. Fantastic. So you know you pick your keywords, which is the the topic of the book. Then you go and and you talk to your freelancers. Uh, and, and one caveat I want to add about the freelancers is a lot of them have specific niches or markets that they're most comfortable writing in. So let's say you want to go into the green tea market. I would try to find a freelancer who has a lot of experience in health and fitness or specifically nutrition, right? So that's just a little caveat. Then what you want to do once you have your book written is, oh, oh one more important thing about freelancers. Do not pay an exorbitant amount of money for the work, right? A good benchmark to go by is I would pay $10 per thousand words right so typically a 40 page book is ten thousand words i would not pay more than a hundred dollars for that ten thousand word or 40 page book okay so that's just a, a quick caveat to save you money right but once you have your book you want to go and format it right and, and kindle gives you very specific guidelines i typically like to start with my title then by the author i like to have a copyright page where it puts my ISBN number, um, it puts the email address that they can talk to if they have any issues, and then I like to go right into it, right? And so you get, you know, you, you format it correctly. At the end, I might throw in if you're if you're writing it yourself, um, then you might want to have like you might want to have like a part at the end where you invite people to connect with you, or if yeah, you yeah. are uh, publishing under a pen name you might want to include like a, a link where people can sign up for your email list. And so that way, anytime you come out with a new book, you can email it right to them. Then you have a bunch of, uh, a bunch of people buying your book in the beginning. So you publish your book and then right when it goes live on Amazon, which typically takes 24 to 48 hours, if that much, um, the, the most important thing is in that beginning time, the first 24 hours that your book is live, you want to get as many sales as you possibly can. Chris, can you talk a little bit about how to make those sales in the beginning and maybe some tips and tricks that people can use in order to sell the shit out of their book? I refer back to a strategy, a, a quite black hat strategy that I did um, starting out my Amazon FBA journey. So um, a good thing would to be in very simple terms to leverage your Facebook audience or uh, when starting out, just your Facebook friends and family. Um, so one mistake I made when releasing that green smoothie book was um, I had nothing, I had no knowledge about smoothies and most of the people on my Facebook knew that. Now, <laughs> when you send out a, like a blank link to a smoothie recipe with your name on the cover of an ebook on Amazon, then many people don't take you seriously, seriously at all. Now, <laughs> just just as like an insight, what I done with my Amazon FBA product is I start I, I sell supplements. So 
I started to come up with a supplement. It was a fat burner. Now I'd gone through a transformation or going through a transformation of like from fat to fit at that time. So people got that I was going through that transformation. So it wasn't as strange if I were to send them out a product and then them leave a review on my listing. Um, same goes with Kindle. You want to kind of get into that market before you start chucking out links to your friends and family, yourself into that target demographic. Not build yourself up as like an, an, an authority of any sense, but just start to maybe communicate a bit more every three to five Facebook updates you do. Um, so people aren't like, whoa, what is Chris doing releasing this book on how to curl hair or whatever it is? Start to start to introduce yourself to the demographic. Um, and then you can start to communicate with your friends and family saying, look, I've got a launch on this book coming up in 10 days. I would love if you could buy it. Um, you can buy it at 2 p.m. on the 10th of May, whatever it is. And then start to just communicate with these people every couple of days in a nice conversation. And then when 24 hour is away from your launch, communicate this again and just remind them very gently and nicely that if they could download your book at that time, then that would be highly appreciated. And then you could follow up for a review. Now, you can, Ben, you can talk to me about the review process with Kindle. Um, but yeah, you just start to do the process very, very openly and honestly. And then if you could get into some Facebook, go there and check out a load of links, start to make a name for yourself in the demographic that you're in and start to add some help and value to the group. And then maybe private message some of the group members who've been speaking to you on the comments within the group and offer them your book for free or at a large discount. And then from there, hopefully the book will be of such great quality, you won't even ask them to review. They'll go ahead and they'll review the book after they've read it themselves. And, and Chris, you actually brought up a really good point um, of, of reviews, right? So not only is it a huge benefit to you to get sales, obviously you want to make money, but you need to get some reviews on Amazon, right? And so, you know, this kind of goes back to picking a topic. When you're first figuring out what book you want to, to write and you're looking at that yeah, three yeah. to five and the keyword of your choice, it is really beneficial to you to take note of the number of reviews that those books have, right? Because as a general rule, if you can create a better book than them, right? So let's say they're doing a book on five green tea smoothies. If you can do a book on 50 and then get more reviews than their book, then you have established yourself as an authority in that niche because your book blows all the other books out of the water. OK, so so think of yourself as like a hunter, like you're looking for something that you think you that, you know, you can beat and then you're just delivering on that. OK. And so about the reviews, what I do and uh, currently on Amazon, I have 76 reviews on CEO at 20. So, you know, I've, I, I'm not just saying this. This has actually worked for me. Um, what I do is I go read the reviews of books that are similar to mine. Right. So yeah, I would yeah. read books on entrepreneurship and personal development. Right. Because that is the cross section of CEO at 20 little book for big dreams. Right. And so I will go read um, the book, uh, the books that are related to mine and I will read their their reviews. OK. And if there are any people on there who have left, you know, real reviews, because a lot of people will do review swaps where they go and they get a VA, a virtual assistant to go and write reviews with other virtual assistants for books. And so you have a lot of people who aren't native English speakers writing really lackluster reviews on your book. And so you lose a lot of credibility. You know, when your book is about green tea smoothies and somebody's coming on and saying, this is a great book about, um, you know, pumping iron and, and doing bench presses, it's just, it's not as effective, right? You want real people really reviewing your book. So, so just don't do review swaps. It's going to hurt you in the long term. But when you reach out to people and to, to those people who have reviewed other people's books, some of them, and in, in order to reach out to them, some of them have their email address listed on their Amazon uh, customer reviewer profile, right? They have like a reviewer profile if you review books and some of them will have their email listed. So what I would suggest doing is reaching out to this person and say, hey, and, and 
obviously you have to be genuine about it. And if you're not actually genuine about it, don't do this. And I'm not saying spam everybody. I'm saying the people that you legitimately want to reach out to and connect with say, Hey, I enjoyed your review of enter book title here. And I noticed that it was in the, uh, you know, personal development niche or the entrepreneurship niche. I have actually just published a book in that same niche. And I would really appreciate your feedback on it. Here is a free copy for you, a free review copy for your, uh, you know, enjoyment. If you are so inclined, I would love to get some feedback from you on Amazon. And that's it. And if you genuinely reach out to these people and you compliment them on their work and their opinions and you recognize them for their contributions, then you try to provide value to them in the form of your book for free. And then you politely ask them for feedback. A lot of people are happy to do it because they really like reading books of that you know, in that industry, they like reading books of that sort. And so they will be more than happy to get a free book from you and to leave a review. Now, the caveat to this is if you have a book that they don't like and they leave you a one star review, you asked for it. You asked them for honest feedback and you can't go back to them and say, hey, you gave me a, a bad review. No, they gave you an honest review. So if you're going to do this, be prepared to handle that criticism. And I'm talking specifically if you are the author, right? There are a few people that I reached out yeah, to yeah. that just absolutely shitted on my book, right? One dude was like, this book looks like it's written by a college kid. I can't believe he calls himself a CEO. He should go back to babysitting and, you know, all these things. And you know what? I'm okay with it, right? I asked for that. I asked for his honest opinion, his honest feedback. Did he go a little bit overboard? Maybe. Who cares? But I asked for it, right? So then you can take that feedback, and here's the best part. You can improve your work. You can improve your book. You can improve your work. You can listen to the feedback, that the real feedback, and you want real feedback that real people are giving you, and you can improve your work, okay? So that is how I would recommend going out and getting reviews. Um, another way to do that is, like Chris was saying, before you publish the book, be communicating with these people or with people with people that you know, people that you trust, and just be like, hey, y'all, I'm writing this book on X, Y, or Z, and yeah, I would yeah. really appreciate it um, you know, if before I release the book, I could give you a free copy, and whenever the book does go live, you could leave me some honest feedback on Amazon. So that way you're including them in the process. You're saying, and, and every day you could be like, I'm working on chapter this, I'm working on subject this. And so they're yeah, part yeah. of it. You're bringing them on a journey with you. And then when it goes live, bam, you say, Hey, this is the day. Here's the link. I would love some honest feedback. Then they're part of it. So they want to help you out. Right. And if you spent the time building relationships with people and giving value to them, they'll be more than happy to, to help you out. Awesome. Good words, Benny boy. So, so you know, moving forward from that, that's how you get reviews. And then, uh, like Chris was saying, you know, you could do some Amazon pay per click. You could do some other social media stuff. Um, and then it's just about consistently building, um, you know, the, these marketing channels. Uh, which, um, you know, I think that there are any number of ways to do it, and you, you really have to get creative. Like Chris was saying, you could start a blog. You could do build up your social media channels. You could talk about the industry as a whole and then offer value. Uh, you know, there are tons of different ways to do it, but once you publish it and you get reviews on it and you get the book to where you want it to be, that that's really it. That is, that's, that's truly all you have to do. That, that is Kindle publishing in a nutshell. Um, so wait, what's up, Chris? The complete overview. Yes. The complete overview. So, you know, but before we end this video um, and before we, we stop dropping value bombs on you guys and gals, <laughs> um, you know, I just I just want to take a moment to speak about um, about the, the whole thing. Right. The, the whole idea of of building a real business and whether you are coming at it from a publisher's perspective, 
of you're putting the team together and you're orchestrating the whole thing or whether you're the author and then you're hiring out you're you're outsourcing like the marketing and the and the publishing and all that side regardless of which way you're going to go about this it's important to have a long term viewpoint and it's important to think about what you want to accomplish it's important to think about why you want to accomplish it and then it's even more important to take massive massive action towards accomplishing those goals right and unless you go and and it's 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 a i think it's a four step um uh I guess, formula to success. And this actually comes from Tony Robbins, right? I was just listening to a seminar of his. He says, you got to figure out what you want to do. You got to figure out why you want to do it. You got to take massive action towards that. And then you have to measure your results and pivot as necessary, right? And the more you keep trying, the more things that you keep doing, the more you just stick at it and keep working and hustling and grinding, the closer you will get to financial freedom, the closer you will get to building the passive income that you want, the closer that you'll get to being able to travel wherever you want to do whatever you want. Like, like for example, Chris is coming to new Orleans in a little while. And and we figured it out at the time of filming in about 288 hours, Chris is coming into new Orleans and we're going to freaking hustle there. And we're going to build our businesses and we're going to work and we're going to grind. And Chris is going to, Chris lives in Wales. He's going to come to New Orleans and he's going to do it from there. And it's because of the freedom that he has built for himself. And that is the same freedom that we want you to be able to have in your own lives. So don't look for shortcuts, y'all. It's not worth it. Take the time to build a real business. Take the time to build real assets. Chris, you want to, you want to give your two cents on that? Yeah, I, I just think like it just look so forward to the future because the future is always bright. And I know how cheesy that sounds, um, but this can come from people who are struggling emotionally, physically, financially at the moment. I know how like, I've been there and I know how dark some of these places are in a hole and there's no escape route. There's no ladder to get out of this big black hole. But I promise you that the more smiles you can keep on your face on a daily basis, the bigger chest you have to raise in the sky, you know, the, the, the positivity that you can feel from your own being is enough just to look forward to what's to become. And even if you are in the darkest of places, it can only get better from there. So, like, you know, that's talking a little deeper on the, on the points of, like, emotion, emotions and stuff like that. But I know how many people are going through bad points and can't think they can get to a better place. Um, and But you can. You can. So just keep looking forward to your goals, your dreams, and don't overwhelm yourself with gigantic steps. Small steps win the race, baby. So take your time. Enjoy the process, and that success will come. Keep it going. Thank you so much for watching. So again, y'all, this has been Chris Jones and myself talking about building passive income through Kindle Publishing. I hope y'all have a fantastic day. Let's build a better world together.